What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again, and today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Bean Canyon Nup from Intel, specifically the NUC8i5BEK. They actually make three versions of the Bean Canyon in a couple different form factors. So there's the small one you see here, and then there's a taller one that'll accommodate a 2.5 inch hard drive in the bottom. These were recently on sale for Black Friday, and I picked this one up here for $329 on Amazon. You will need to add RAM, storage, and the operating system of your choice. It is a bit expensive for what you're getting, but if you watch my channel, you know I absolutely love these small form factor PCs, and I had to pick this thing up. It's really not that much bigger than a regular Raspberry Pi 3B+. I also own the Skull Canyon version of the NUC and the Hades Canyon. As you can see, the Bean Canyon is a pretty small computer. Like I mentioned, these kits do come bare bones, so you have to add storage and RAM. I'm going to go with 8 gigabytes of DDR4-2400 ballistic RAM and a cheap silicon power 256 gigabyte M.2 SSD. I actually picked up a few of these M.2 SSDs, and they're really not that bad. They're a lot cheaper than Optane or Samsung, and they work for my needs. They work just fine. Before we get into testing, I want to go over the specs. For the CPU, we have the Intel Coffee Lake i5-8259U. It's 4 cores, 8 threads at 2.3 GHz, but it will turbo up to 3.8. The GPU is actually the Intel Iris Plus 655. This is one of the more powerful Intel GPUs as of making this video, and it actually handles some stuff really well. 300 MHz to 1.05 GHz. There are two DDR4 SODIMM slots in here, and it will do 32 GB. For storage, there's an M.2 slot that does support Optane. 42mm to 80mm SSDs will fit. Also have a micro SD card slot on the side. And even though I have the shorter version of this unit, there is a SATA port and a power connector inside. You just need the correct cables for it to work. There's a total of 5 USB ports on the unit. USB 3.1 Gen 2. And there's also two headers inside where you could add two extra USB 2.0 ports if you want. Has the built-in Intel Wireless AC 9560 plus Bluetooth 5.0, 3.5mm audio slash mic jack on the front, HDMI 2.0a, and a Thunderbolt 3 port on the rear. We could add an external GPU to this using that Thunderbolt 3 port, and I think I might end up ordering an enclosure very shortly. So now it's time to see how this little thing performs. I have been really impressed with this CPU, and the GPU really isn't that bad either. You're not going to be playing AAA games, 60fps, 1080p on this built-in GPU, but if you added an external GPU, you could have a full-fledged AAA 1080p 60fps gaming machine here. So I went ahead and installed Windows 10 Pro and a bunch of different applications. I've done a lot of testing with this so far, and if you want to see anything else running on this machine, let me know in the comments below. The SSD that I chose was one of the cheaper ones on Amazon, and looking at the performance here using Crystal Disk Mark, it's not that bad for the price I paid. Now it doesn't have anything on these Samsung Pros or Optane, obviously, but for the price, I'm really happy with the performance, and it's way faster than a spinner. The built-in Intel Wi-Fi performance is outstanding. There are no external antennas, they are all in the top of this thing. My home Wi-Fi is 400 megabits per second, and I got 236 down and 26 up. The Geekbench scores were way higher than I thought they would be. Single core, 4610. Multi, 16,482. So yeah, this is a decent little CPU here. Scored a 767 on Cinebench R15 CPU score. We're still under that i7-4770K, but this is very impressive for a 28 watt chip. Ran a Heaven Benchmark, 1080p, high settings, scored a 491. Not the greatest, but you gotta remember these are built-in Intel graphics. Just judging by the score here, I think some newer games will work at 30 FPS, 1080p, and 60, 720p. 4K video playback. Now this is one of the hardest things that I test on ARM chip, so we're gonna test it here. 4K, 60 FPS, MP4, this is Big Buck Bunny. All the information is listed at the top of the screen. We are at 60 FPS and CPU utilization is around 
Let's test one more here. This is 400 megabits per second, 4K UHD HEVC 10bit.mkv. The CPU did jump up a bit more. We have a very high bitrate video here. 20% utilization. We're at 60. Does drop down a half a frame every once in a while, but you really shouldn't have any trouble playing pretty much any kind of 4K content on one of these units. Moving over to some gaming performance. This is Doom 1080p high settings and the render resolution is set to 100%. We're averaging 25, 24 FPS. This is using OpenGL. I tried Vulkan and I got a little less for some reason. So this game is working the GPU and CPU pretty hard. We are at 68 degrees Celsius. Now I can hear the fan kick up. It's not annoyingly loud, but you can hear it kick up a little bit when you hit about 70 degrees. And I know that sounds hot to a lot of people. They want to keep their CPUs really cool, but you got to remember this thing is super small here. And as long as you're not hitting that thermal throttle, the CPU is perfectly safe at this temperature. We were getting around 24, 26 FPS, 1080p high settings. Here's 720p high settings, much better. Nice and smooth. If we went down with some other settings, I'm sure we could bump it up a little more, but I wanted to kind of keep it at high, just to have that comparison between 720 and 1080p. If you want to run some older Valve games like Half-Life, Counter-Strike, Left 4 Dead, Left 4 Dead 2, they're going to work fine here. This is Left 4 Dead 2. We're averaging 90 FPS, 1080p, everything's maxed out. Unfortunately, my game capture wasn't picking up sound here, and it didn't pick up sound in Skyrim either. I was at high settings, 1080p in Skyrim, the original version, 60 FPS all the way through, didn't have any dips. And finally, for the PC games, GTA 5, 1080p, normal settings, I have all of the population density bars set to about mid-range. It did much better than I thought it would. And if I drop it down to 720p, same settings, we're almost at a constant 60 here. It's getting real close to it. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you knew it was coming soon. Emulation testing. Now this is PVSSPP, God of War, Chains of Olympus. This is at one to one resolution, no speed hacks. The only thing I did turn on in the settings was the FPS counter up in the top right hand corner. This thing will handle pretty much any PSP game at full speed. GameCube version of Soul Calibur 2 running in the Dolphin emulator at 5x resolution. Now it did go to 4K, but I did have a few dips, so I just dropped it back one. 5x looks really good. As long as the game is compatible with the Dolphin emulator, you can play it. You might have to go down to 3x for some games, but most everything should work well on this unit. The PlayStation 2 emulator, PCSX2, also works great here. We're at 2x resolution. This is Ratchet and Clank, up your arsenal. Using the DirectX 11 back in, and this is actually PCSX2 1.5. And one of the most requested games to test in this emulator, Shadow of the Colossus, 2x resolution. When you go up to 3, it goes down to about 50 FPS. So 2x or 720p is the sweet spot here for this machine and PS2 emulation. So overall, been really enjoying this little thing. I think it's an awesome performing mini PC. One of the best that I've ever tested besides the Hades Canyon. Yes, this is more powerful than the Skull Canyon. 
you will get better benchmarks and better gaming out of it like it sits. I completely understand that I can build a machine that's going to game better than this thing for around the same price, maybe a little bit more, and if I use used parts, I can actually get away with spending just half of what I've spent on this. But that's not the point of these little tiny nucks. These are low power draw, high performance, small form factor machines, and I myself think it's really interesting to see so much computing power in a small package like this. So if you've ever been looking into getting one of these NUCs, I would suggest either the i3, the i5, or the i7 version of the Bean Canyon. If you want to see anything else running on this unit, let me know in the comments below, and keep an eye out on the channel because I think I'm going to be adding an external GPU to this very soon. I have a 1030, a 1050, a 1060 that I could throw in here, but I just ordered an RTX 2070. I think we'll get some really awesome performance either out of the Thunderbolt 3 port, or M.2 to PCI X4. I really appreciate you guys watching. If you're interested in learning more about these or even picking one up, I'm going to leave a link to Amazon in the description. And like always, thanks for watching.